Um, Xiaomi may be known for launching a plethora of different phones as part of the same series, to the point where it sometimes gets a bit confusing. But for those who only care about the best all-round flagship experience, there's one model each year worth paying attention to. The numbered Pro. For 2023, the Xiaomi 13 Pro is taking up the mantle of flagship, promising the best of everything. From display through cameras and outright performance and speed, it's got it all. In fact, it's turned out to be quite a special device and might just be one of the best smartphone camera systems we've ever seen in a phone. I'm Cam Bunton from Pocketlint, and this is our review. If you do like it, please do leave a thumbs up, subscribe, and tap that notification bell, and then you won't miss any more. Now, few materials are as time-consuming to work with on smartphones as ceramics, or bio-ceramic in this case. They also happen to be inherently more durable than glass that coats most devices. Understandably then, it's seen very much as the ultimate high-end material to use in a smartphone. The bioceramic back on the Xiaomi 13 Pro looks and feels almost indistinguishable from glass, but gives off this smoky, chromed look. It loves to collect palm grease and fingerprint smudges though, at least on the back of our black review unit. Despite that, it's got a luxurious finish and one that we've grown to love. The camera island ramps up seamlessly from the rear panel, and like like previous models, it has those minimal lines separating the three lenses. It's classy as heck. Adding to its durability credentials, Xiaomi has also seen fit to get it certified for water and dust resistance. It's IP68 rated, which is about as good as it gets for a smartphone. It won't let any dust in and can survive being submerged in shallow water for up to 30 minutes. It's not a small device by any means and has that heft we've become accustomed to seeing on premium flagship models, and it's also quite heavy. That fact alone may make the standard Xiaomi 13 a little more appealing to some. Now let's move on to the display, and here again Xiaomi is flexing its flagship muscle because it's got a 6.73 inch AMOLED display boasting high resolution, high dynamic range, high refresh rate, high peak brightness, and high touch response. It's got everything. The WQHD Plus resolution ensures that details are pin sharp, with a pixel density of over 500 pixels per inch. It's worth noting, as seems to be the trend, that this isn't enabled by default. So if you want the crispiest details and text, you'll need to go into the settings to enable that. It can reach peak refresh rates of 120 Hz and drop as low as 1 Hz when required, helping the phone save on battery use when it doesn't need to refresh quickly. And with its 240 Hz touch response on board as well, the on-screen content seems to react really quickly to your interactions. Add to that the fact that it's got 1200 nits typical brightness, peaks of up to 1900 nits, support for over a billion colors, and support for all popular HDR formats and you get one of the most dynamic, colour-rich, and brightest displays around. It's a very strong display in every measurable way. It's brilliant. As for software, that's MIUI 14, Xiaomi's latest skin built on top of Android 13, and it's about as far removed from the Pixel software as you can imagine featuring many design and function changes that we find frustrating a lot of the time. Now I go into more detail on my complaints in the written review, so be sure to check that out, but in short, the fact that it splits notifications from control toggles is cumbersome and unintuitive. Thankfully, you can bring the old style back. I also don't like how it tries to force the wallpaper carousel on me constantly, or how when you want to change the wallpaper or ringtone, you get whisked out into the theme store, instead of making it easy to pick a Xiaomi-designed pre-install option. It takes a bit of time to set up the where you want essentially, all because Xiaomi tries to force you into using its new designs, which in my mind are worse than what I'd consider standard Android features. Now moving on, and regardless of the task, Xiaomi's flagship seems to be up for it. That's thanks to top-of-the-line hardware inside. The Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 is paired with fast RAM and storage, and that means downloads, launches, and apps are all quick. Ooh, never left in lagland, never experienced any noticeable stutter in the user interface, or while playing games that require quick reactions. It's smooth, quick and powers through everything like a champion. This focus on speed is seen in the battery charging technology too, with Xiaomi bundling a 120 watt hypercharge adapter in with the 13 Pro. And what that means incredibly is that it only takes 19 minutes to go from empty to full. It's pretty staggering and has some real benefits in everyday usage, especially if you often forget to plug your phone in at night. Most of the time I'd simply wait until the phone hits 20%, then plug it in for 10 to 15 minutes, take it off charge and repeat the cycle. It was usually enough time to bring me back up to a full battery again. I'm and because of that, battery life is never really a concern. 
Not that it struggles to make it through a full day anyway, because even on our days with the heaviest testing, the camera with the gaming and video watching, I didn't manage to drain the battery in any 24 hour period. Most moderate days, I'd get to the end with about 30% left over if I took it off charge in the morning. Now, the main event. And while the rest of the experience was generally good with the Xiaomi 13 Pro, it's the camera system and features that kept me going back to it and wanting to use the phone all the time. The primary 50 megapixel one inch type sensor is a larger sense than what you'll find in pretty much every other smartphone. In turn, meaning each pixel is larger than the typical. And that's great news for photography enthusiasts because it means better low light performance, and less noise in general. Xiaomi has partnered with Leica and images have a really authentic quality to them in terms of detail and textures. It's clean without any excessive over sharpening that we've seen on a lot of smartphones recently. In low light, the main camera does a great job of lifting light and delivering an image without any excessive distracting noise in the shadows. It's not missing anything on the features front either. So if you want close up macro shots, it uses the ultra wide lens to good effect giving you the ability to get right up close to subjects and get a sharp image with lots of depth and detail and good background blur. As for colors and contrast, that depends on which default color profile you use. Xiaomi offers both Leica Authentic and Leica Vibrant. And as you'd suspect, the former produces images with slightly muted, more realistic colors and less contrast, where the Vibrant option cranks it up slightly, making colors more saturated and contrast higher. Regardless of which one you choose, you'll never get colors pushing too far into the realm of oversaturation. The detail and texture remain clear and clean and for the most part the colors and contrast are relatively consistent across all three lenses as well. My only real complaints with Xiaomi's photos is that in general the darker shadowed parts of the images look a bit too dark sometimes so you don't see some of the detail. Now the primary camera is joined by what Xiaomi calls a floating telephoto camera which lets you zoom in close without losing detail and be able to focus on objects even when they're pretty close to the camera. You can zoom all the way up to 70 times digitally but obviously the detail falls off by the time you reach those upper limits. But even pushing it to 10 or 20 times zoom, the images are actually usable. Xiaomi's zoom and some smart computational processing have also enabled a couple of features that I've been really delighted with. Portrait Pro effects and Supermoon mode. The former of those lets you switch between four different Portrait Pro lens settings each with a different focal length, color effect, contrast, and bokeh style. Some of the results, if you didn't know I'd taken them with a phone, the detail, the color, the depth, and the overall image quality could easily convince me I was looking at a photo from a DSLR or mirrorless camera. It genuinely is wonderful at taking portrait photos, whether that be of yourself, or your cat. As for the super moon, that's on another planet to so many other smartphones. Not literally, the moon isn't another planet. Still, with the mode chosen from the list of camera options, you can take a photo of the moon from five times to 60 times zoom, and it will deliver an image that lowers the exposure and even at extreme zoom levels, counteracts the handshake and the exaggerated movement to deliver an image with craters, shadows, and detail on full display. The further you zoom, the bigger the moon, obviously, but there is something of a detail fall off here the more you zoom in. The smooth round edges get a bit bumpy, but it's impressive nonetheless. To be able to shoot it completely handheld, no tripod, pro settings, tweaking, or anything else, is otherworldly. See what I did there? Now we've mentioned the primary camera is the strongest of the three, but that's really only clearly visible when you move into extreme low light situations. Night mode, for example, is a real struggle when you don't have a good amount of street or building light to work with. In the lowest light situations, the primary works really well, pulling in a lot of light from all parts of the image, where the primary and zoom lenses don't seem anywhere near as capable, sometimes leaving you with a shot that doesn't look like it's a night mode shot at all. And as for video performance, you get lots here. The phone can film Dolby Vision content at 4K60, giving you a sharp, smooth content with deep contrast, wide color support, and bright peaks. Even the selfies perform well, although as usual, not as strong as the rear cameras. It's always more convenient and easy to use your selfie cam to shoot yourself, but with those Portrait Pro lenses I've already mentioned, it might be worth trying those instead if you can manage it. Get someone else to take your photo if you have to. In the end, Xiaomi's latest Pro model is a fine device, combining fantastic performance with an exceptional camera, great battery life, and a stunning display. In fact, I liked it all so much, I was happy to put up with my software frustrations just so that I could keep using it. Now, the price point isn't exactly cheap, but when you consider it's going up against the more expensive S23 Ultra or the iPhone 14 Pro Max, it doesn't look too bad. For some, the MIUI hurdle will be too great, but if you're happy to sit and tinker and tame the phone, you're left with something of a diamond from Xiaomi, which exceeded our expectations from the brand, and that sets a real good tone going forwards. It's a truly wonderful device, and one that delivers in buckets. Let me know what you think of the Xiaomi 13 Pro. Will you try something that isn't a big name brand this year? 
Let me know in the comments, or you can get me on Twitter. I'm at Cam Bunton. Again, if you did like this video, please do leave a thumbs up, subscribe, and tap that notification bell, and then you won't miss any more of my uploads. I'll see you again in the next one. Bye for now.